welcome back to what are tnibs for general disturbance this is a t54e1 it's a tier 9 american heavy tank it's located on the westbourne of paris and it's under the command of lomian eu now this is an oscillating turret mounted on top of an m48 pattern hull it wasn't put into production they did make prototypes but it never got accepted i think they have problems with the autoloader well, it's a four-shot autoloader. It's got a 120mm, no, 105mm, more than 120. I'm thinking about the uh, the next one up, which is a T57 Heavy. Um, no, it's a 105mm round, which is capable of doing 390 alpha, and it's also got a penetration of 248mm with standard. APCR, it goes up to 310, so it's got decent firepower. And 3, 32 seconds for a full shot load in the magazine, two seconds between each shot. So, yeah, kind of a long time to load a mag. But when you do fire, you do get a lot of damage on the enemy. Probably not as well. It's certainly not as much as you would actually get from a T-57 Heavy. And of course, that's a four shot autoloader as well. But that does a lot more damage. Well, he spies this first round off, but didn't get anything off it. I think he was guessing there was somebody there. There are some enemy in sight. There's a Conqueror and a Panzerkampfwagen 7 and a T-57 Heavy. The next tier up, he's just around the corner. It's a tier 10 game with tier 9 tanks in it, so he's bottom tier. But that means he can earn extra XP by hitting these higher tier opponents. And yeah, that's where that's why he was firing in that corner, the Conqueror. Okay, there's a T-125 down there, and you can just see the side of the Conqueror at the moment. But with that sort of angle, I don't think he's going to get a hit. That one hit... I think that hit the tracks more than anything else. Oh, the Conqueror hit him. Still can't get a shot through that. All he can do is hit the tracks. And he's opted for a reload straight away. And he's loading the premium rounds. Trouble is, I don't think with that angle, he's actually going to be able to hurt that Conqueror. And you can now see where that shell actually went through. It went through the gun mantle, right to the side of the gun. Um, which is quite a nasty little shot. Now, what's he doing here? He's going to go around the other side and use that rubble heap. That's quite a good space to go around, actually, because, um, except, of course, it's occupied by an ST1 and a 60TP, and when he's loaded, he fires the first round and gets the Conqueror. Second, get oh, he got an Amarak! Oh, that's a big one! 1,489 hit points! Oh, that's going to help him a great deal. That's nice. Two rounds and he takes out the Conqueror. Now, is he going to flip for a reload? Is he going to hold those two rounds? There's 50 TP just around the corner. I think he's going to hold on to the shells and then deal with him. He's got Super Conquer's company. Conqueror's trying to bait the enemy at the moment. In fact, that 50 TP is a long way off. He could have completed the reload by now if he'd actually opted for it straight away after killing the um, the Conqueror. And he's still waiting. The 60 TP is on his own now. The ST1 is not over that side. ST1's moved up. Okay, so he's popped the reload. He's just going to sit here for a moment. Let those guys do their thing and then he can move in and pick up the pieces afterwards almost there yeah the e5s on that corner firing back at r430u difficult to go around the corner because the pans are can't fucking see them we'll try to shoot him in the side if he does I think he's going to try. Oh, they get one of them. And he, yeah, he does take a round from the Panzerkampfwagen 7. But he's now got the tactical advantage, which forces the 7 to pull back. 
and the T110E5 realises the same. He's in terrible danger now. Now he's only got three shots in the mag, but I think the seven's now going to take a lot of punishment. There you go. Bye bye. He outmaneuvered him. Did take a round for it, down to half his hit points, but it was worth it. If there had been two tanks there firing up at him, though, that would have been probably catastrophic. There's the remains of the Conqueror that he killed. Blew his turret clean off. Oh, he's got a fire on the E5. He didn't get the kill, though. Unfortunately, that went to the Object 268, but he did get the fire, and he picked up a lot of hit points from that. 162, took around from the Tortoise, unfortunately. 389 loss from that. Now, I think he's headed back to his own cap because the T-57 Heavy on the enemy team appears to be close. The enemy has succeeded in the north end of the map. They've spotted the T-57 Heavy near our cap here and he's popped the reload. He was more concerned about where he was, uh, what he was looking at rather than actually where he was driving just there. But he managed to circumnavigate those obstacles. And the T-57 is not going to see him coming because the building's in the way. But it, when he gets around to the next corner, that T-57 is going to see him. If he's on the corner, he's going to be shooting into the guy's ass. But he's only got standard rounds. But if he is shooting into the ass of the T-57, yes, it's going to be a nice surprise for him. Because most of those rounds are going to have an effect. Oh, has he been seen? Yes, he was seen. Puts one into the Leopard Prototype. Pulls back out to do a side scrape, unfortunately. Can he get it? Yes, he can. Leopard Prototype. Anything goes through. Did take a round from the Leopard. And he's down to just 105. And he was Amarak. But those two shells he's got at the moment will keep going. He really ought to fix those. Yeah, he has fixed his Amarak. The T-57 Heavy knows he's here, but the T-57's got more dire needs. The Object 277 and the Superconk are facing him. So if he goes around the corner, he gets two free shots right into the rear of the T-57. Thank you very much. We'll have both of those. Too late, Mr. T-57. You are bait. You are dead. And that means there's only one enemy remaining. It's a Char Future 4, the reward tank. And, well, Lomian's going to sit here and have a brief of just for a moment. <laughs> He's in reload. He'll join the others uh, when he's ready. Bit of luck that actually uh, being able to survive that shot from the uh, Leopard. 422 hit points. Yeah, I think that's average roll, I think, for a Leopard. If he got a high roll, it might have put a, a bit of a problem for Lomian. The Tortoise shot as well didn't help. 105 hit points left well he ended the last battle on a very few hit points and this battle is now over because the object 268 has just killed the char future 4 and there you can see where the round from the leopard went in right through the top of the turret so let's have a look at the end of battle stats it's an ace tanker for lomian eu in the t54 e1 he got a Demolition Expert because he blew the, the Conqueror's turret off. He also got a Fire for Effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. A Fighter Badge for getting at least four kills he got for. A Duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. And a Hand of God for surviving the battle. Having received damage from four different enemy tanks. As well as a Bruiser Medal as well for getting at least five critical hits. In that battle he managed to get nine. And his win from the battle was 6,065. So uh, that's high Super Unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score. Well, didn't get the highest damage in the game. No, that actually went to the T-57 Heavy, the one he killed. 5,008 hit points of damage to him. And the next high score being the Super Conk with 4,881. And he got the third highest damage with 4,242. So he was up against some good opponents. When it came to kills, though, he did get the highest number with four. Three kills went to the Batch at 25 TAP, and he picked up a Lever Slaves, and also three kills to the enemy TVP T5051. When it came to base XP, it was Lomian, yes, because he was up against tier 10 opponents, and he was taking them out, especially the T57 Heavy Tank, which is the next step up, the next logical step, in fact, 
from the T54E1. So of course he earns 10% extra XP for hitting higher tier and to opponents and taking them out of the game. 1,260, he was the only player to get over 1,000, and that's why he's got an ace tanker. 989 to the Supercon, 934 to the ST1. In fact, actually, I think he thinks that the reason he got the ace tanker was really because he blew up that Conqueror. Let's have a look at detail. 14 shots fired, 14 direct hits, and 9 penetrations. So all of his shots hit the target. It's just only nine of them actually did some uh, uh, damage by penetrating. The others were impacts on the armor, the um, uh, the ones that didn't go through. 4,242 hit points of damage, all of it done at close range. Four hits received from the enemy, all of them penetrated, I'm afraid. In fact, uh, you saw two of them on the turret, and uh, yeah, they were pretty ugly, uh, big hits. One enemy vehicle spotted, five enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, and 369 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium account, he earned 61,793 credits from that game, and after repair and ammunition respawn, he did have to use some premium ammo during the game, but it worked out. He actually ended up with a profit of 12,391 credits, and if he hadn't had a premium account, he would have made a loss. He got 25 bonds from the battle, and 1,890 XP, Times two for the first victory, took away 3,780 experience points altogether. And I do think actually that second shot on the Conqueror, because we almost missed the first shot where he fired that one in. The second shot on the Conqueror, though, was dead square. And I think it went right through the Amorak, blew the thing to pieces. And that must have been a bit of a surprise for Lamy, because I didn't think he, I thought he was going to have to unload that whole mag into the Conqueror before he was going to get the kill. But 1,400 hit points. In fact, actually, it's showing here 1,804, but the first shot actually did do connect and do some damage. But 1,400 hit points of damage from one shot, that was very nice indeed, very satisfying. So if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And remember, there's one more replay from Lomian, and this time round, he's going to be in the Tortoise. Thanks for watching.